I came on board and got them, them on actually. So I was there was a there was a kind of initial draft, and really the documentary was the starting point, the Gareth Malone documentary, and just the idea of doing a film about these women's story. That's how it started for me. I just heard about the story, and there was a very sort of uh, embryonic script, really. But then my thing was like, we need to get first of all, we need women writing this film. Um, and we need to get them meeting the wives and we need to just dig into the real story more to get more nuance. So it was a case of getting um, Rachel and Roseanne to meet military wives and uh, Rachel in particular really bonded with a group of military wives up at Catterick. Um, and they were always at the end of a text or a phone call to verify facts or add little, I mean, they were so honest and sharing some quite personal details, um, quite a lot of which ended up in the script. And how aware were you of the, the Military Wives Choir sort of before the documentary and, and, and what amazing group of women they are? I wasn't that aware, to be honest. Um, so it was, it was a producer, Rory, who produced the film, just said, do you, know about, you know, do you know about this? I think there's a great story there. And so once I saw the documentary, I was just hooked. I was in. There were some scenes in that where the women are singing and they're kind of being very stoical. And there's that thing where they're trying not to cry and using music to kind of help them get through it and I just thought god if you can get that on the big screen that's going to be really powerful. Absolutely and you mentioned that you, you you captured so many emotions in this film sort of as you say some people pretending to be okay others being angry and um, that chuffed chart counting down um, to the days when they come back really struck me. How much of all that came from the research? Um, all the details came from the research, really. So all those, exactly like the chuff chart and all those little nuances and even the weird things like Annie sending pictures of herself in a box off to uh, Helmand to her husband, which is so random. Um, we didn't come up with that. That was a military wife saying, you know, this is one of the weird things that I do. Um, so I was really touched by the fact that they were happy to have these details shared, some really harrowing details as well. Um, as well as funny stories. Um, so I just felt a huge sense of kind of responsibility to be true to their story. And it's always, when you're making a movie, you know, you are making a movie, so it's like, it's gotta be true, but it's gotta try and tell a good story as well. Um, but they were just really helpful in kind of just, just opening their hearts to us and telling us all, all about their lives. Was there a particular story or, that sort of st stuck with you through all the people? Well, there's one that we cut out, unfortunately, which was really great, which is quite a funny one, which was a pizza delivery guy coming to the gates like and being security checks and everything and the women so it's the women having to go down to the gate and like get their pizza through the security gates um ju just felt like it summed it all up because it's like these are just normal families really but in this really weird place where you know they're kind of surrounded by wire and security um so that was yeah we that we shot that but in the end it didn't quite fit into the story so one of those cutting room floor moments unfortunately <laughs> And Dame Kristen Scott Thomas, her humour, her realism is just perfection. What is the most impressive thing about working with her and what's it like directing a dame? Um, I, re I, loved, I loved working with her. She was great from the moment we met. So smart, you know, and funny. Um, and just so smart on the script and uncompromising. Um, and without being kind of fussy for its own sake, she just really wanted to make sure everything was there for a reason and we weren't kind of lunging too far into kind of silly comedy or into sentimentality. Um, so she was a great kind of check actually. Um, and then on set she's just a pro, you know, and she just, she's been there many times and she knows exactly what she's doing. And she was great with the ensemble. Um, that was a great thing really about as well as Kristen and Sharon, it was also that they led from the top, a bit like in the movie, but they created a really good atmosphere and like the ensemble just became best of friends from like day one um, and still are all kind of on WhatsApp groups and stuff. Um, but I think that it was because Sharon and Kristen kind of led from the top with that, with being very unfussy and, although, you know, Kristen kept herself to herself, a bit like her character. Um, you know, there was a really great ensemble atmosphere on set. Amazing. Um, and Sharon Horgan, obviously, you, you've spoken about her comic timing. She's so relatable as this character. What's your fondest memory of working with Sharon? Uh, well, it was a lot of it was for her was about the music side of things um, and being worried that she can't sing, which she can actually sing really well, um, and playing keep you know learning enough keyboard to be able to get away with looking like she can play keyboard. Um, so the memories of her is mostly her going, "That was terrible. That was terrible. I didn't like. It. I was. I was like, it's fine. It's completely." And the music we have a musical advisor. They think it's great. It looks great. 
Um, so yeah, she got worried about the music, but I think it looks really convincing and really good. And you didn't want them to rehearse too much of the songs I heard. Why was that important? Um, I had a pitch to them, which was that we wouldn't rehearse at all, because so that it would be. I, mean, I had a, my big thing was to make the film feel very real and natural, and to not feel like there was a kind of controlling hand or over it, and it felt to feel too plastic, you know. So I wanted military wives to feel like very real and very natural and that when those women were singing those songs for the first time they really were singing them for the first time so I said to the cast that said, we're not going to do any rehearsals we're just going to start filming and that means when you get good on set you get good for the first time on camera and they were like uh, I think we probably will do some they kind of insisted basically on doing some rehearsing but we, we did it in kind of reverse order so we concentrated on the songs towards the end of the film where they have because you're cheating time you're shooting in five weeks and we're doing five months so you have to accelerate their progress as a choir. So we rehearsed from the back, back up the film, uh, started with the last song, worked our way back. Um, so we didn't really have any rehearsals for the first couple of choir practice scenes. They really were just diving in there. And um, as Kristen's character says, a bit like sober karaoke. But the great thing about, I, I, one thing that I'm almost feeling like on my next film, I might insist on like choir practice as the first thing the cast do because they all came in for the first day of rehearsals and traditionally that's incredibly uptight and everyone's kind of guarded and it's really hard to get an, an ensemble to start bonding together. Um, but the first thing that they, we didn't really do any rehearsals, acting rehearsal. We just did singing rehearsal. We didn't have time to do break down the scenes and do the dialogue. We just did singing rehearsal. So on the first morning, this cast who'd never met each other was by within half an hour was singing together and you can't hide you know and it's that's the whole point in a way it was life imitating art and by lunchtime they were just like best of mates you know and it went from there on it just this bonding experience of singing together in the rehearsals was just a great way to kick things off and I wanted to ask you for our regional stations um, where specifically you filmed up in Yorkshire and what you enjoyed about the local area um, well Catterick base the army base up at Catterick were really involved with military wives in the beginning they kind of gave us access to the base to soldiers and in a lot of the scenes we shot of the, for example the troops leaving and the families saying goodbye they're real military families they're not extras they're military families and real soldiers um, and the soldiers marching around our soldiers and the ve they gave us access to the vehicles obviously it's not a lot of that because the soldiers will go in the first 10 minutes of the film um, so we had full access to Catterick and it's sort of it's a, a huge and brilliant base with lots of different areas that we could shoot in. And it's in a really beautiful part of the country as well. It's in the moorlands up in North Yorkshire. Um, and then we did a little bit more, a bit further south. We were looking for a tunnel or cave or something to film one particular scene in. Um, and we ended up with a railway tunnel. That was down near Harrogate, um, which again was a beautiful place to shoot. It was, we spent lots of our art department budget on rain machines, which is a bit ironic as it was raining being Harrogate. It was raining quite a lot, um, so we had the pouring rain and expensive rain machines all going at the same time, which was quite painful. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, and were there any other military choirs that you spoke to across the country, or mainly that one? Um, we spoke mainly to women who'd involved, been involved with Catterick, as they were the ones who really started the very first Military Wives Choir. Um, but then we got involved with the Military Wives Choir Foundation and talking to them and just hearing their stories. So we spoke to the women from Chivener as well, and then more and more, towards the end, more and more <coughs> real choirs got involved. So I'm very grateful to their cooperation. And we showed a group of military wives the film that we did a early screening. Um, it was one of these kind of market research screenings that you do in, did it in Milton Keynes. And all oh, the studio were there, and everyone's very concerned and tense about like you know you get these scores that everyone talks about and um, count a lot in the industry. But really, we had I knew there were six military wives quite choir members there and I was like there the, that's the score I really really care about what do they think about it you know so they left they weren't allowed to fill in the forms and because they're kind of a bit biased so I ran out and found them in the bar and they were like you know loved it so and they were quite choked up actually they were like really captured the life it was great you know and so I was that would meant everything to me that they because if they kind of left politely left and kind of gone yeah great and you know, you know what people mean when they do that, but they were really, really into it. And then from that point on, they got involved and helped us with a, an extra little sequence where we got a few more military wise choirs involved. 
Amazing. Um, and the music, obviously, a uh, key part of the film, but you worked with award-winning composer Lorna Balfe. Um, what, what did you want from his score in amongst the singing? Well, Lorne had a real challenge on Military Wise because the composer Lorne, because uh, there's got all this live music. So what do you do with the rest of the film? Um, I remember early days, I was like, maybe we don't have any music. We just have singing and then it's quiet and then you get a lot more out of the music when it came. But, you know, I think I found in the edit, the film did need something to set the scene, especially in the first 10 minutes before they started singing. Um, so it was something that was represented the women's spirit was what I, the brief was really, that represented the kind of stoical, just keep kind of keep going strength of the women that had a little bit of poignancy in it, but also had a kind of a upbeat energy. Um, and I was very keen not to be too sentimental. Obviously, some of the film deals with some darker scenes and events. And oh, actually, there's not a lot of score in the in the scenes where um, some more emotional things happen, because it just felt like I didn't need it, didn't need to be so we didn't need to be told twice, like tell a sad scene and say it sad with the music, more using it to kind of energize like, here we go again, the women's kind of inner energy. And the final song, I believe, was written by Robbie Williams and Guy Chambers. How did you get them on board? We asked. We asked. Well, it went out, it went out to a few people, actually. Um, we had a great uh, music supervisor, Liz Gallagher, who I worked with before, and um, she went out saying, we're making this Military Wise film, and she went out, you know, there's a network of... And some quite big songwriters kind of came in and pitched things and... Um, but I had a little bit more of a conversation with Guy and uh, he came back with a demo, you know, just sent this little quick time and said, how's this? You know, and we were just like, wow, that just is, just does it. It's so good. Um, and it still gets me going when I see it in the screening and stuff. The key changes are really powerful. And the industry needs more women on screen. How important do you think it is for audiences to see these very, very real women? Uh, sorry, ask that question again. Sorry. So obviously, it's it's more important than ever um, to see more women yeah. on screen. Um, but I thought actually, how important is it for audiences to see these very real women who are sort of expected to keep quiet and carry on? Yeah, that was a bit of a mission uh, for me. Was that when I found out and saw the documentary about military wives? Obviously, the documentary had given it a certain amount of given military wives a certain amount of profile, but uh, not really digging right into getting to know them as women and sort of what they do when they go home and what it's like when their husbands are there and the intimate scene, you know, the intimate moments that those women have. So it just felt like uh, it was very important to get that story on screen. But I think really because, although it's very specific, that's what I look for, is like you look for stories which are fresh and specific but which are universal at the same time. So it's a very particular world, the military, a military base is a very high jeopardy, you know, it's... It's a very, very unusual and stressful life. Um, but it's about universal things. It's about we all, you know, love our partners and we all care for our children and we all have challenges. And lots of people find music um, is a great way to get through those hardships. And that's what really is as much a celebration of music and singing as it is anything else military wise, really. And you mentioned the, the atmosphere on set. Were there sort of much time for everyone to actually spend time together off camera? I'm imagining that sort of karaoke scene in real life. They all went out. So they all went out. I think we'd already shot that. That was towards the end. They all went out on like the, one of the last days. And I, I think we filmed that scene where they tell Jess, they say to Jess, you're going to sing the solo at the market. It was about the second to last day or something. And they'd all been out the night before. And they were just hysteric, you know, they were hysterical because they'd all these stories had happened and it was like, it was great fun, but it's quite hard sometimes to get the schedule done because of the banter. Um, <laughs> but it was amazing. And Kristen, I think, actually, at one, they, at one point, she had some accommodation nearby up in Catterick and she got them all round for dinner. I think she cooked them roast chicken and I was getting texts from, like, some of the, the ensemble players who'd, like, really never been in... A movie before, let alone, and there it said, "I'm in Tesco's with Kristen Scott Thomas buying roast chicken." Um, so yeah, there was a real sense of her as a kind of matriarch um, over these women towards the end of the schedule. It was great fun. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? Yeah. Nice. Hey, 